Okay guys, so we're back and it's section 7.3 notes. And again, please make sure that you have your um, date at the top and 7.3 um, with your name as well. Now I did give you notes in class for this, so you are going to be following along with those. So first we're going to talk about linear equations. So yesterday you, we, um, we worked on coordinate points, the coordinate plane, graphing um, using a table of values, and we're going to keep up with that today. But today we need to really identify what a linear equation is. All right, a linear equation is an equation in two variables where the highest power, the highest exponent, is a 1. Now we talked about quadratic equations earlier this year. Quadratic equations, the highest exponent was a 2. Here we're going to have a highest exponent is a 1. So let's look at things that are linear equations. All right, y equals 2x plus 1. It's a linear equation because the x and the y both have a highest exponent of 1. Or y minus 3x equals 1. Again, the highest exponent of the x and the y is a 1. Not linear equations, all right. x squared plus y squared equals 4. Why is that not a linear equation? Because the highest exponent is a 2, not a 1. What about um, y equals x squared? Again, highest exponent we see is a 2, so it's not going to work for us. Really important for us to be able to distinguish when something is linear. Okay, so we're looking for those highest exponents to be a 1. All right, so we're going to graph, like we did yesterday, 2y minus 4 equals 4x by creating a table of values. Now, for this exercise, and like I said, normally I want you to have five values. So for this exercise, we're going to use three, and the ones I want us to use are negative 1, 0, and 1. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and substitute our x's in and solve for our y. All right, so 2y minus 4 equals 4 times negative 1. Okay? All right, so we get 2y minus 4 equals negative 4. <coughs> we add 4 to both sides. We get 2y equals 0. We divide by 2, and we know that any time we divide 0 divided by any number, we are going to just get 0. So at negative 1, our y-coordinate is 0. All right, then we go on. And you guys go ahead and substitute the remaining values in while I'm doing erasing and starting over. So I'm going to plug in 0. 2y minus 4 equals 4 times 0, which is 0. We add 4 to both sides. So we get 2y equals 4, divide by 2, and y equals 2. And I plug it into my table. And then the last one negative, is positive 1. So we go ahead and we plug in positive 1 for x. So 2y minus 4 equals 4 times 1. Look at me plugging, always putting in parentheses because I keep reminding you of that. So 2y minus 4 equals 4. We add 4 to both sides and we get 2y equals 8. Divide by 2. And so y does indeed equal 4. All right, so now I have three coordinate points. I'm going to go ahead and plot those points. Remember, we have the x um, axis, the y axis. We know that here the x's are negative, here the y's are negative, here the x's are positive, here the y's are positive. So I go to the point negative 1, 0, right here. x is negative 1, y is 0, and I'm going to plot that point. I go to the point 0, x is 0, y is 2, so up 2 on the axis. And then the point 1, 1, 2, 3, 4 along the now, I draw a line through them. Look at that beautiful line in red. All right, so very, very, very important points on this graph that you guys should notice. They are called the x-intercepts, and you have a fill in the blank, and the y-intercept. So I'd like you guys to go ahead and on the graph, I want you to go over and label it. This is the x-intercept. OK? 
okay? And that point right there is the y-intercept. All right, let's define that for me, okay? All right, so the x-intercept is where a graph crosses the x-axis. Very, very important point. The y-intercept just as important. The y-intercept is where a graph doesn't just have to be a line, where a graph crosses the y-intercept. Okay? And so I think I gave you, um, I think I gave you a, a, some notes like kind of to fill in. What is the coordinate of the x-intercept? Well, that coordinate we had already determined was negative 1, 0. So go ahead and write that in for me. And what is the coordinate of the y-intercept? The one we had already found was 0, 2. What I'm hoping you notice is something very important. Do you notice anything? What do they both have in them? Yes, indeed you are right. They both have 0 in them. And this is going to help us to quickly find the x and y intercepts. So let's keep going with our, our notes. How can we find the x and y intercepts? All right, so to find the x-intercepts, I want you to think about what we just did with zero. To find the x-intercept of any function, you're going to set y equal to zero, or substitute zero in for y, and solve for x. And that will always, 100% of the time, give us the x-intercept. Let y be zero, solve for x. Okay, so what does that mean? It means I'm going to plug them right in. So 4x plus 3, let y be 0, equals 12. So we get 4x, 3 times 0 is 0, so this goes away. So 4x equals 12. Divide by 4, and so we get x equals 3. We go ahead and then write that coordinate point for ourselves. The coordinate point is 0, 3. Okay? All right. We're going to use that same concept to find the y-intercept of any function. To find the y-intercept of any function, not just lines, any function, you let x equal 0 and solve for y. Let x equal 0 and solve for y. Okay, so we're going to plug in 0 for x, just like creating that table of values. Okay. So 4 times 0 is 0, so we get 3y equals 12. We divide by 3, and so y equals 4. We then write our coordinate point for our y-intercept, which would be x of 0, y of 4. And look at that. Oops, I wrote this one wrong, didn't I? Caught myself. That one should have been 3, 0. Hopefully you guys caught me as well. Okay? All right, let's keep going. How can we use this concept to graph linear equations quickly? Well, sometimes we can graph them very quickly using the intercepts. So I still create that table of values for myself. But if I'm graphing them quickly using the intercepts, I just quickly let x be 0. And in this case, now I let y be 0. Now, we just did this equation, and we found x, the um, coordinate, to be 0, 4, and then I think 3, 0. Is that correct? 0, 4, 3, 0. Good. Now I take those two coordinate points, x is 0, y is 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and I plot it. And then 3, 0, so I cross over to, uh, count over 3 on x, and there I connect the two points, and I'm done. There's my quick sketch. Now how did I know that this equation was linear? How did I know I needed to sketch a line? Again, because the highest exponent is a 1. All right, now it's your turn. You try. Graph using the intercepts. 6x minus 2y equals 18. Again, you create your table of values. x, y, we only need two points if we're graphing using the intercepts. We're going to let x be 0. We're going to let y be 0. Okay, so you go ahead and do that. I'm gonna, you can press pause, and then you can come back and check. Okay? All right, so I'm going to let x be 0. So 6 times 0 minus 2y equals 18. 
This is going to always become 0, so I neg negative 2y equals 18, and y equals negative 9 when I divide by 2 on both sides. Do the same thing. I'm going to let y be 0. So I have 6x minus 2 times 0 equals 18. Again, this is going to go away because 2 times 0 times any number is 0. 6x equals 18. I divide by 6 on both sides, so x equals 3. So I get the point 3, 0. I go to my graph. Now I want you to notice the scale on this graph that I have on my paper. I gave you guys a scale of 2s. Remember, we were counting them off as ones. You can make your scale whatever you'd like. You just need to label it appropriately. So I've got 0, negative 9. So x is 0, y is negative 9 is down here. It's right in between the 8 and 9. So I'm going to plot the best point, 0, in between. Then I've got 3, 0. So x is 3, y is 0. It's in between the 2 and the 4. And there I've got that. And then, of course, I'm going to do my best attempt. I'm hard on the smart board sometimes to go ahead and graph my line, okay? So tomorrow in class, we are going to be practicing a lot of these graphing of the intercepts. All right, last thing for today, horizontal and vertical lines. Two very, very, very important lines. All right, I'm going to tell you that this is an equation of a line, and this is an equation of a line. But why do these equations look different than the other equations we've been graphing? Well, I hope you're saying that it's because they only have one variable. This one only has y. What happened to the x? This one only has x. What happened to the y? All right, well, let's consider the first one, okay? Let's make a table of values, and we're going to only use three points here. Um, we'll do negative 1, 0, and 1. All right, so those are my x coordinates. Let's, let's find out what y's are. If x is negative 1, what is this telling me? Well, there is no x. I have nothing to plug in, so what's y? It's 3. Okay, let's let x be 0. I have no x to plug it in, so what's y? It's 3. I have no 1 to plug in for x, so what's y? It's 3. Let's plot those points. Negative 1, 3. 0, 3. 1, 3. It's linear because the highest exponent is a 1. So look at that interesting line. Okay, That is a horizontal line. The equation of a horizontal line is always y equals the y-intercept, okay? Oh, so no matter what, whatever your y-intercept is, that is your equation. So if I give you a horizontal line going through that, just like that, the y-intercept is negative 3, so it would be y equals negative 3. What if I gave you a horizontal line and I didn't tell you what the y-intercept was? I said, okay, here's this horizontal line and here's the point, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, negative 6, negative 7. It's a horizontal line. Well, we look at the y-coordinate, it's going to be the one that's going to be the most important for us, so y equals negative 7. Okay. Now the same thing happens on this side, but this one's equation is x equals, okay? This is a vertical line. It means that no matter what the y coordinate given is, the x is always going to be 5. So we go to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, if y is 0, x is 5. If y is 2, x is 5. If y is 7, x is 5. It is a straight down, up and down line. The equation is always going to be x equals the, the x-intercept, okay? So that's why those x-intercepts, again, are really, really important. But these two lines, you are going to have to recognize from their equations. So I would spend some time remembering that y equals a horizontal line. One thing that you can help, help yourself remember it is if you take a y and you flip it over, it looks like an h for horizontal. So maybe that's one way that you can help yourself remember that the y equals is a horizontal line, okay? All right, so we're going to stop there, and we are going to be practicing this all tomorrow. And um, make sure you bring your notes in so that I know that you have done all the work, and I'm going to be looking very specifically for all the notes that you took. So please make sure you took very good notes today, okay? All right, guys, have a good day.